What's up, YouTube? Today's video, we're going to be going over the second part of Post Manifesto. And that is what did they forget to nerf in the Balance Manifesto. And there are five things that they probably should have nerfed. And either they were too scared to because of the player numbers or they just didn't feel like these things needed to be nerfed in this patch cycle. But these are things that are probably guaranteed to be nerfed in the future. And if GGG is actually cruel enough, like this person with the nerf gun in this picture, they might actually just nerf these things in the patch notes. And I think that would actually be the worst case scenario because it's like getting debated once again. No mention of it in the, in the balance manifesto. And then they end up dropping it in the patch notes. That would be super cruel and unusual punishment. Now, tomorrow I will be doing a uh, best league starters thing before the patch or reveal actually hits so we'll see if we're actually accurate with those predictions right now ea ballista totems poisonous concoction spectral helix pathfinder and assassin lightning strike raider are looking like the top contenders along with your favorite resident sleeper bill dd ignite and let's get started with what did they forget to nerf in the balance manifesto and dd ignite might actually be in there now, this is one that almost every single person expected GGG to nerf. This is known as flash charges gain not hit or uh, budget mage blood for the poor people. But I think GGG is sympathizing now more with the poor PoE player. So they want the poor player to have more power. They want the poor player to be able to experience what a mage blood could feel like. And in, in almost... A lot of scenarios, this is pretty much mage blood without the 75% effect, or not 75%, 25% effect on the prefix and the 70% effect on the enkindling orb. And even though you're missing 95% effect, this still is very, very extremely strong, especially on invitations where you might be getting hit a lot. It also allows for the hilt list, which is one of the swords that makes you do deal, deal damage to yourself, and that actually counts as when you're hit by an enemy, and that pretty much allows for infinite flash sustain on that build. I know Rue has a build with Molten Strike Champion that utilizes hilt list and this interaction to pretty much have a pseudo mage blood. So this uh, this uh, flash mod should probably have an internal cooldown of around 0.2 seconds. Or 0.25 seconds. Most of the flash charges gained on crit do have this cooldown. And I thought it was pretty much an oversight that they didn't actually include this. Now this also leads to some pretty broken interaction with Pathfinder and Scion. Due to percent life gain on flask use. Now if you look at the Scion tree over here. And you can see down here that we actually have Pathfinder, right? And you see how recover 4% of life when you use a flask. Now the actual Pathfinder Ascendancy also has, let's see over here, Master Surgeon recovers 6% of life when you use a flash. What this means is that if you stack enough flash charges gain and reduce flash charges used, every single time you get hit, you will gain enough flash charges so that you trigger the flasks every single time. So you actually gain 30% back of your life every single time you get hit on the Pathfinder and 20% of your life back on the Scion. So this allows for you to pretty much trivialize some end game content that you get hit a lot in small hits. So this could mean that this interaction could make some of the end game bosses a complete joke if it turns out to be still in the game like this. But next up we have our favorite Nightblade support gem and this support gem is actually just overpowered. I don't really like to talk about Nightblade support gem because I utilize it so much. So talking about it, the first rule of Nightblade support gem club is you do not talk about Nightblade support gem club. But we're going to talk about it here, right? So what Nightblade does is it gives you elusive on critical strike. And this is pretty big. Usually you can't really get elusive anywhere else besides elusive on boots, 10% chance on crit. And it also gives you supportive skills at 1% the critical strike chance while elusive and it also grants you elusive for supportive skills also grants 80 to 99 percent critical strike motor multiplier for skills supported by nightblade and the quality also happens to be increased effect of elusive from supported skills which is huge 
So why is this so OP? Right now, the elusive effect scales the multi. So you can get like 250% elusive effect on the tree. And this is not exactly the hardest thing. So if you ever look like at a pretty good build, you always take from the shadows, increase the tax speed elusive effect. And then you even are able to get, so you can see here, look how much damage this one node gives right here. And then there's also the elusive effect on the claw mastery of 40% increased effect of elusive. And the elusive effect is honestly so good that you use a claw, you're still using this from the shadow node and also because of the dagger mastery. So this is actually just completely overpowered scaling in my opinion, and it probably should not exist like this. Now, elusive is also important because it grants you a lot of chance to dodge attack, chance to dodge spell hits and 30% increased movement speed. If you ever look at a path of ability and you go look at Nightblade support gem, and you cap out your elusive effect, you will see that you'll gain a lot of EHP. So this support gem provides you the best damage in the game. It probably also provides you with the best defensive mechanics in the game. So it is just absolutely crazy. So let's take a look at this pop. This is a Venom Gyre pop. I did add a lot of points because I was just putting in points. But let's just see. Elusive is giving us 58 million DPS. You replace Nightblade, you're at 29 million DPS. So this one support gem is nearly 100% damage. And you might be wondering, what if you use an uh, alternate support gem? So if you use an alternate support gem, which happens to be awakened at the chaos damage, let's see, you're at 38 million DPS. So the next best support gem is 20 million DPS lower. And it's actually crazy if you want to see how much of multi elusive actually gives us. It gives us 472% all the way up to. 920 percent now this is pretty much just not balanced i'm pretty sure they might nerf this next patch but for this patch utilize this broken mechanic as much as possible because it is bonkers now next up we have alternate ailments and this is secrets of suffering otherwise known as the interrogation so in order to understand why this thing is so broken and overpowered you want to understand what alternate ailments are so it pretty much replaces the cold fire and lightning ailments which are freeze ignite and shock with brittle scorch and sap so what brittle does is it gives us up to 50 percent chance to critically strike afflicted enemies what this means is that if your weapon is five percent crit and you have 15 percent brittle your weapon will be treated as 20 percent base crit now scorch lowers the elemental resistances by up to 30 percent so this is pretty much like an elemental penetration gem now, sap causes the affected targets to deal up to 20% less damage. So you're pretty much getting enfeebled. So the OP part about this alternate ailments thing is brittle. Brittle is completely busted. It makes it so that you rarely need any crit chance in order to cap your crit out. Now, for instance, you can use a 5% base crit weapon, which is pretty much as low as it gets, or a 5% base crit spell. And you would be at 20% base crit if you had crap brittle. What this means is that you only need 500% increased crit chance on the tree flask and gear in order to cap crit. So you can see it's pretty easy to get 500% crit chance, right? You can get already like 100% crit chance from the diamond flask. So that's already 20% of the requirement satisfied. And these are 60, 20, 20. So that's another 100% right there. So you can see it's pretty trivial to be able to get that amount of crit chance. And you also get a bunch of crit chance from Elusive, or elu not Elusive, but Nightblade. So this is completely broken. It allows you to get 100% crit chance for way too little investment. And Scorch is also a huge damage boost. It is pretty much impossible to beat Secrets of Suffering out. Even if you give the Secrets of Suffering user 50% shock, it turns out that on the Lightning Strike Berserker or Raider, Secrets of Suffering will still win out in damage, even with a 50% shock. And uh, yeah. So next up, we have Spell Suppression. Spell Suppression is honestly just flat out broken. I don't think a lot of the boss encounters in the game were designed around the boss's spells dealing half damage. So what Spell Suppression does is it currently has spell damage, and you can stack it all the way up to 100% chance to Spell Suppress. So every single one of the boss's attacks will do half damage that are spells. 
So this should probably be nerfed to around 35 to 40 percent because a lot of boss fights just aren't designed with spell suppression in mind. If you ever did Awakener with spell suppression and cast with damage taking a molten shell, you can take the die beam every single time. You literally cannot die on that fight. And uh, it also makes new boss fights a little bit of a challenge to make because spell suppression is just so strong and it's so easy to get to 100%. You have a chest piece, you can roll up to 35%. A shield, you can get up to 35%, I think. And then a lot of nodes on the tree brings you to 100% really, really easily. Even if you get no spell suppression on the tree, you can get 35% on your chest, 35% on your shield, and like 15% on your helm and boots or gloves that you would be done. Now what this means is that in the future, if they ever make boss fights that make it so spell suppression is not so effective, that means that normal characters would just straight up get one shot at super, super easily. I do think that the best way to probably nerf spell suppression is to nerf it to around 35 to 40%, but they could also nerf the spell suppression roll of the gear. I think the worst nerf possible they could do for it is if they wanted to nerf spell suppression so that it is not able to be capped to 100% because at that point, what's the point of spell suppression? It's pretty much like spell block or spell dodge. Now, lastly, we have the biggest offender of them all, which is how corpse life scales with DD. So ignite based DD was actually buffed in a lot of ways. So what they did was they made desecrate now as a 15% chance to spawn the highest HP specter. So what this means is that every single t corpse in Desecrate has a 15% chance to be your Spectre. So that means each cast of Desecrate almost guarantees a Spectre corpse. I think it's around 0.9 corpse per cast of Desecrate. And then when you factor in Spell Cascade, you get 1.8 Spectre corpses per cast. Now, a lot of the single target for Death of the Dead revolves around Desecrating and then pretty much spamming Vault DD. Or not spammy, but using Vault DD. And what Vault DD does is it blows up every single corpse. So once you have the Ignite rolling with the Spectre corpse, then you're pretty much guaranteed to one shot the boss or get pretty close to it. So what this means is that this build will pretty much be mandatory to be played in Gauntlet for every Ascendancy. It also means that most hardcore players in SSF Hardcore will probably be playing DD yet again. And this is actually just a complete oversight. I'm not sure how they actually left this in the game. I hope that in the patch notes, they will nerf Corpse Life so that it's not so crazy. Because they did nerf Ignite damage by 28%, and I thought that and they probably think that 28% Ignite damage nerf is enough for DD. But it really isn't, especially when you buff the downside of DD too. It really makes DD the best overall build as a League starter in Hardcore and Hardcore SSF. But overall, these are the things that I think deserve to get nerfed. And this is not me being a homer and not talking about things that I want to hide. And yeah, I never talked about alternate ailments. I never talked about Nightblade support gem. But I truly believe that all of these things are OP and that no one will really complain if you nerfed them. Well, maybe they would complain about alternate ailments or spell suppression. But no one would really argue that spell suppression shouldn't be at 40%. But that's pretty much my two sets about it. We'll see tomorrow when they give out the patch notes with the reveal, or they might not do that with the reveal. But at least we'll be able to see what new league starters will be able to play. But I expect these things to all be nerfed in the next patch, right? Or maybe I expect this thing to be changed in the patch notes for my sanity's sake and hardcore player sanity's sake because no one wants to play more DD. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more Mage Blood, Squires, Exalts, and I guess the new Chase Uniques to me. And see you next time. Bye.